Oh, let's all take a deep breath. You and me and the rest of us. Because I am full of excitement to speak with you today, to converse with you. So much on my mind, so much I've just taken in in the last two weeks. I think it's been almost two weeks since I made you a video. And uh, I thought I was gonna be um, having a lot more time during the holidays with no family uh, around me here. Uh, but friends are popping out of somewhere, <laughs> not nowhere. They're popping out of my, the hallways and the building I live in. Um, I'm very, very thrilled and very happy to share with you that I'm experiencing people ready to bust out of their insula insulated um, little uh, ways of going through life. I came in an apartment building where I have not lived in an apartment building since shit, maybe when I was in my 20s in New York. And um, I've been, you know, in uh, single family houses uh, or perhaps sharing a house with a, a partner. And uh, here in this apartment building for the first two and a half years, and uh, all through the pandemic this year also, people uh, uh, avert their eyes. They tend to look away or look up at the, there's a little television screen up in the elevators. And the television screen is there to warn you about everything terrible about COVID and how many times you have to wash your hands and, and um, blow your nose away and masks. And it's, it's this whole how to get through the COVID. And I, I dread when my eyes look up that way because I immediately want to avert them. And what I'm doing now is I'm just looking across at someone in the elevator and I'm holding a gaze with them. And sometimes they immediately look away, but I'm finding more and more they are returning my gaze. Yes, they are looking back from above their mask and we're actually holding something longer than a split second. And that's the gratification of a lifetime for me because I spent so many years teaching people how to relax, breathe deeply, and connect with a human being standing perhaps right here this close to you, this close, that close, and breathe together, don't talk, find comfort if you can in the being in the presence of another. Finding comfort and relaxation in not conversing necessarily right away, but observing. And in the gaze, which is a, actually a very, um, it's, a, it's a noun, it's a state of being, but it's also something that you do. You, you send your gaze to another or you receive their gaze. And that is an active, active noun, I think, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's, it takes some practice to relax into gazing. And anyway, the point is, I'm finding people more willing to do that during a whole one minute elevator ride to the bottom floor. Sometimes the conversation has to do with where are you from or how long are you here in the building or how are you doing with the uh, quarantine, you know, mundane hellos and goodbyes. But um, just over the holidays, uh, real friendships have popped up. And we were invited uh, to a New Year's Day dinner. I invited friends for New Year's Eve, these same two couples, um, not, necessarily, not necessarily married couples, just people who live together, share apartments, um, lovely people. And we're all opening up to each other in a, in a very unafraid way. Now, Yes, we give each other hugs and we take off our masks when we're in each other's apartments. 
and we're enjoying company. We're enjoying getting to know new people. Really enjoying it. Um, yeah, I think the last video I made for you all was uh, around the winter solstice and the, uh, the, the depth of energy that I felt during that night of less sleep than usual. And um, my friendship and my energy with a particular person here in town is building from a distance. Uh, I had a whole year of that this past year, uh, being in quarantine and locked down here in, in Panama, the country of. And the person I had met at the very beginning of 2020 was in Hawaii. And we began a, a friendship through text messaging, photographs. Uh, he's a wonderful photographer. And I find a way to send either cute pictures of myself or of my surrounding area or the pool where I swim in the mornings or um, the park where I like to walk and the tree that I like to hug. And I think I kept him well entertained as he did me. And not just entertained, we, we went deep. And um, there were times that I felt, I think I'm in love with this person. And then I would shake my head and go, well, how wonderful is that? I'm in love with someone I've never met. And yet, I feel like he's been in me many times. And I feel like I am in him and have been in him for lifetimes. So that has carried me through many months of this year. And I can honestly say that living with my significant other, uh, not a husband, not a boyfriend, but a man friend who I've lived with for 20 years, sometimes romantically and often um, because it was just easier, uh, very easy to live together. We enjoyed living together. So neither one of us wanted marriage or commitment other than honesty and full communication and full disclosure. And uh, after four marriages, me and divorces, uh, for him one, we knew we didn't want marriage. So anyway, living together with him for 20 years has been very successful. But during the um, lockdown and quarantine time, I, I started to go a little crazy being with the same person all the time. And I would ask him to go, uh, go to the lobby, go out on the sidewalk, sit somewhere else, be somewhere else, <coughs> excuse me, so I could experience being in the apartment alone. And of course, I had to do uh, a, gra a great deal of the going out uh, shopping on the days that the women could go. It's, you and other places don't relate to this, but here in Panama, that's the way they figured out to lessen the number of people in the stores. Women on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, men on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The weekends are all quarantine lock-in. All right, so end of that story. Um, uh, as we are making friends, we are finding cohabitating easier because we're having great conversations with other people. We're having an opportunity to learn about other people that we are genuinely interested in. And that's juicing this relationship a great deal. The same with the, uh, with the, ba the man on the... Um, text messaging, and of course, they're just my girlfriends who sustain me no end. My girlfriends really sustain me. But I like this kind of um, having a type of love affair, I'll call it for lack of a better word, um, online. Not dating sites, that's never been my thing, but uh, really in full disclosure conversations and um, if they're not long ones, then they're short, but very much to the point of what's going on inside of me right now, and I'm sending it to you. Um, so I want to encourage you to develop more people in your life 
if you're going through the same kind of thing that I am, if you are living in a place uh, anywhere in the world where you have less freedom, less opportunity to gather and join in workshops, gatherings, bars, parties, we've all come from a, uh, I think a long lifetime of, of um, socializing. Yeah, yeah, socializing. And it can be superficial, but it can also be meaningful. And we need it. We need it to sustain uh, the thinking mind, the very, the very creativity that that sustains us and takes us to places that we that we need. We need to think about new things, and we need people to um, instigate our minds into new areas. This leads me into a wonderful conversation that I was able to have over many years in uh, workshops and seminars, Tantra, the Art of Conscious Loving, and the Divine Feminine Awakened Masculine workshops and seminars that I was very much a teacher in over the last 30 years. And one of the subjects was if you're not a couple, if you're not here at the weekend or the week long as a couple, but as a single or an unmarried person, there were, there were many, um, there was many times desire to, what to call the people who were in the groups who were not with partners, not partnered. Because uh, singles, um, they didn't always like that terminology. Uh, the message that we gave to the singles in our uh, weekend and week-long workshops about being single and about being tantric and learning all of this great information for deepening intimacy, deepening the experience of a sexual connection, deepening your orgasmic pleasure. How could we address the unpartnered people in those workshops? And uh, one of the most important things we said to them was, please don't be here searching for your beloved. <coughs> please be here in, as a total person, which you are. You're not part of a person, you're a total whole being. And it would be best not to attend this weekend or week long looking for a partner. Look for friends. Look to make friendships, exchange phone numbers and emails. If you like the subject matter of studying more deeply the art of conscious loving, or if some of you want to get together to practice some of the homework that we would give to the couples to go back to their homes or hotel rooms and practice, um, you guys can go do that. You can rent a room for the night here in the hotel and just do the practice. Don't feel like you're, because you're in a hotel room together and you've just learned a bunch of sexual techniques that you need to jump in and be sexual. Actually, it would be better if you practiced the practices. And then tomorrow decide if you wanna to get together again for a deeper sexual connection. That gives you a chance to begin a friendship. It gives you a chance to bring healing to another single person because no doubt they have just been through or recently been through a breakup or a divorce or the death of a loved one and they need some healing. And we don't realize that just about everyone we meet, just about everyone we meet on some level does need some healing. And that may sound like, well, come on, Caroline. <laughs> Sex is healing, pleasure is very healing, but conscious sexuality is more healing than all because it's the word conscious. It's how to leave someone that you're just spending a couple of hours with, perhaps doing a practice or homework practice assignment, leave them better than you found them. 
What about if you're just going out on a date with someone? What if you could bring the mindset to the date that when I, because I know I'm gonna go home later and I know I'm not gonna spend the night with him or her, um, bring the mindset of, I'm going to leave this person better than I found them. How would you do that? What parts of you would need to open more deeply? And I don't mean just opening your clothes and revealing more cleavage, though that can't hurt. I remember once, I'll get back to the subject, I remember once going into a teaching uh, event with my husband at the time, Charles, and I had on something that was kind of low like this, and I said, what do you think, Charles, is it too much cleavage? And he just turned around and looked at me and he said, honey, there is never too much cleavage. Well, I left my top or my dress open and um, found out he was right. <laughs> Nobody complained. And I felt like I was really um, offering a visual delight to the audience of my cleavage. And you know, the smallest breasts kind of pushed up together are just as revealing to the heart center as fuller breasts are. And we need to share the beauty, the beauty of our cleavage with the waiting world. There's so much ugliness out there. There's so much sadness. There's a lack of beauty almost everywhere. Unless someone is willing to say, here's some of my beauty. I want you to see my cleavage and I want you to enjoy the visual delight of me in a beautiful color with my hair done and um, smiling eyes and bright, shiny, smiling teeth. I take great pride in offering myself to the world when I go out in it. And I usually, I always take time to make sure that I'm at least more than presentable. It's, it's part of the pride of being a woman. It's part of the, I would say the responsibility, but that sounds like too heavy a word, privilege. It's part of the privilege of going out into the world and being the best I can be. And bringing that best me with more of a smile on my face and more of a smile on my heart to those who I pass, those who I bump into uh, pulling something off a shelf at the store, taking walks, going to the gym, I go to the pool oh, five mornings a week here at the uh, building I live in uh, just to take in the horizon and the, the morning sun, that, that pure essence of morning light. Um, when I lived in Hawaii, in Maui, I lived on the North Shore, which is the side of the island that faces due east. And my bedroom faced due east. So I woke up many, many mornings just as the sun was rising out of the ocean. And the first glance of daylight was the sun rising out of the ocean. And I, I always said the deepest thank you and the deepest prayer for the gift and the privilege of experiencing intimately sunrise and taking in a breath of that sunrise before I jumped up to go enjoy it outside, anything I could do outdoors uh, as the sun was rising and as that early light was uh, hitting on all of the uh, greenery and all of the <clears throat> water lilies in the pond, there, there was a slant of light that the way it shined on the inside of the house when it shone through the glass windows first thing in the morning. So I still do that wherever I can. I, I, I go outside first thing and I take in the sky. And wherever you are, I am sure there is some sky. If you look up and out at a cloud passing, at a tree limb or a leaf blowing, birds in the sky flying by, 
Uh, it starts the day in gratitude. It starts the day with, how can I leave everyone I see today better than I found them? Maybe it sounds too woo-woo for you, but it sounds real woo-woo for me. I'm a positive person. The, 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 um, as I say that to you, I remember back to being, oh, maybe 11 or 12 years old, and my grandfather, who was my biggest fan, gave me a book. He was so excited to give me a book. Guess what the name of that book was? The Power of Positive Thinking. So as a very young woman, I took that book to heart <laughs> and I <clears throat> read it. And I um, have really tried to live by the power of positive thinking. And believe me, I know it's not always easy because there's that part of the mind that wants to come in and argue you out of a positive thought. Yeah, but look what's happening in the world. Yeah, but we're losing our freedoms. Yeah, but I see the rain cloud coming in and the sun will be gone any second now and it's gonna I'm poor and I wanted to get out. And so um, there's this back and forth dialogue that we get to work with <laughs> in our complex brains. We get to work with how frequently can we come back to the remembering the power of positive thought, the power of a spoken word fits in there with the power of positive thinking. So as I, as I wind down this conversation, I, I want to give thanks to my beloved granddad. I love you so much, Grandpa. Oh God, I loved you more than any thing or anyone in this world. I loved you from the time I first knew you and you held me and, and you used a cane and you would invite me to crawl up and sit on the cane that you would hold across here and, and I'd put my arms around your neck and we'd go for walks. I called you Nanka because I, granddad was too formal so I made up a name, Nank or Nanka. <clears throat> and next to you I loved most my baby brother, Johnny who I really miss, especially around holidays. I love you, Johnny. Thanks for looking down on me from your heavenly seat up there, your lounge chair in heaven. Uh, I know you're guiding a lot of the great things that are happening for me because I know you love me that much. So I, I wind up this conversation with I love you, and I am loved by you. I bow in namaste, I bow from the divine within me to the divine within you.